Hi, welcome back to Astro Peaks. So uh, today I've been sent a camera from SV Bunny. It's their new colour camera. It's based on the 294 sensor. Um, I've paid for this camera so the review will be non-biased. Um, it's come out of my own pocket. Um, it's new on the market and I thought that a lot of people would be interested as at the price point this will be a good step up from a DSLR into a dedicated Astro camera. So without further ado, let's get into it. I have to say the actual build quality of the camera itself is really quite good. Um, it's a sturdy metal case, everything seems to be uh, screwed, there's no doesn't seem to be any loose parts. The USB and the power connectors all click in really well and they're not loose at all. So here we've got a, a description of what actually the, the camera looks like. So yeah, it's a 12 volt, five amp uh, uh, power connector and a USB three. Um, the fan cools down really quickly. I've been using it in Nina to shoot my dark frames. Um, and to be fair, it cut the fan cools down now, if you leave it up to the native driver, it cools down really, really quickly. So that's that's good, and it holds the temperature fine, doesn't fluctuate. Um, the graph is in line with what I see on my Altair cameras. So very pleased so far. Um, the only thing I would say that I'm disappointed in that it doesn't have is the um, a USB slot, so you can plug in a focuser or a um, filter wheel. So you're, if, if you're currently using a camera with a, f a filter wheel or focuser, you're going to have to find another way of uh, connecting those up to the laptop or your, or your mini PC. So you might have to look at getting a, a USB hub. So at the moment, I would say that's the only, only negative uh, issue that I'm finding with the, with the camera. But so far, so good. It was packaged up really well when it arrived from China. Um, it was in a in a sturdy box. It had loads of that bubble wrap uh, around it, and it was actually well the, well packaged in the box. And the box is quite a nice, sleek design. It's very much like the if you're familiar with Apple products, it's a very similar sort of box to that where it's all nice, just looks well presented. When you open it up, the camera comes in this neat little bag, similar to the ZWO type uh, holders for it, and you get a range of accessories. Um, from, from adapters so you can put it onto various uh, uh, telescopes and also you can um, it, it did come with also like a couple of shims as well so if you were short on your uh, measurements by a couple of millimeters or a millimeter there's um, a few little shims that are not actually on here that it does come with so that, that I thought that was a nice little addition comes with a power pack um, and also you get a USB cable which is plenty long enough um, it's approximately two meters the cable, so you've got plenty of length there for you to connect it from the telescope to your laptop. Um, I'll be using this with my Altair filter wheel, uh, not filter wheel, sorry, filter holder, um, and that's 17.5 millimeters in diameter, and there's a back focus of 6.5 millimeters. So I just need to make up that that little bit of difference, and I think with the shim, and I've got a uh, various couple of uh, um, extension tubes I'll be able to get to the 55 millimeters my back focuser requires so yeah you get a nice range of adapters um, so you should be, have no problems attaching this to, to any sort of telescope whatsoever so let's have a look at some of the specifications for this new SV Boney uh, camera so it's the Sony four thirds IMX 294 CMOS sensor um, the sensor size is a good size. Um, it's really, you know, it's, it could argue that it's um, very common in DSLRs, the kind of four thirds type size for, um, sensor there. Pixel size 4.63. Um, it's a square pixel on a 23.2 diagonal and it's 11.7 .7 megapixel. So you're almost getting a 12 megapixel camera, but what I consider very good money. Um, 75% quantum efficiency that's that's very good um, so that basically means for every 100 photons you collect 75 of those will be turned into electrons so it's a, 
a very, very good um, uh, sensitivity sensor. A typical DSLR, you're looking at between 45 and 55% quantum efficiency. Some of the newer cameras, like the 26C that I've got, that's um, quantum efficiency above 90%. But 75 is really good. Um, if you were thinking of buying this camera as a, as a you know progression from your DSLR, then you will have a noticeable difference in in the, your imaging time. So if, you know for an an hour an hour exposure compared to your DSLR will be a lot. You'll have a lot more resolution and a lot more uh, details there. Low read night noise and that number there is pretty much the same as the ZWO. And looking at this the camera specs here, it, it pretty much is the ZWO repackaged. Um, so you're going to be getting for the money a, a great camera here. Image buffer there of 25, 256 megabytes. So if you were doing solar imaging or planetary imaging with this camera, you've got enough buffer there to download the images without impacting your, your, your imaging run. And it's a 14-bit 14, 14 camera. So you get a good array of colors there. Um, frame rate, 19 frames per second. That's good. USB 3, which is which is obviously now is just the normal with a lot of these astronomy cameras. Um, back focus there of 7.5 millimeters. So you'll have to find 47.5 millimeters of extension tubes to your flattener or reducer. I think I've got those. It's an M42 fitting from memory. Yep, yeah, it is. So I've got those. So I'll be able to uh, attach that to my, my GT81, no problem at all. Um, but yeah, so, so far so good. I'm just gonna compare this to this the ZWO294 and see if there's anything that is actually different. Well, there's the, the price is the difference there. So the ZWO is 980 and the at the moment, plus your postage and packaging from memory is about 20, 20, between 20 and 35 pounds. Um, it's 600 pounds. So, you know, it's a significant saving. And if you were thinking out of that SV Boney as a, a kind of first Astro camera, I think it could be onto a bit of a winner. Anyway, let's have a look. Yep, so same for third sensor, 1.2 for the uh, readout noise there, 14 bit. Yeah, everything is exactly the same in terms of the stats. So uh, yeah, very good. What I'm gonna do now though, is jump into astronomy tools and let's have a look at what your kind of, um, see how the resolution works out for under or over sampling so i've got three scopes i've got the william optics red cap the gt81 and i've got an 800 millimeter um f4 imaging newtonian so as it's pretty much the zwo camera i've just popped it in there and the, and the ccd pixel size is the same so that's absolutely fine so you can see here with the william optics red cap under sampling is quite significant um it's nearly four times the scene so that's not great. So uh, what we want to be trying to do is get get it into this area here, to the green, um, and let, let's have a look. But to be fair, if you were thinking of putting this on a red cat or a, a low focal length um, image, short focal length uh, scope, sorry, um, you know, you're not going to be cropping in, so you could get away with a little bit of uh, undersampling. Um, also, you, you can you can address that through you know, doing drizzle in your, in your post data processing, but ideally you want to try and get it as near to the uh, near to the, to the middle as we can. So let's have a look and see what it would be like on my GT81. So without the focal reducer that I've got, you know, it, it's a lot better. We do want that number down to as near as one as we possibly can, um, but uh, that's not too bad. Let's have a look if I put my reducer on. Obviously, it's going to take it the other way, so not great there at all. So it's not a really good compatible for a, a, what I consider a medium focal length scope. Now, I, I don't think there is a, uh, a in there, it, my scope's in there. So I'm just going to, for the sake of this, just remove that. I'm just going to change the focal length to make that 800 millimeter. Ah, so if I was to put this camera onto my new imaging Newtonian, that's really good. So sampling will be nice so I could get some nice tight close crops that'd be good if I'm doing galaxies um let's see what it'd be like on a Skywatcher 150 PDS because that's a very popular camera a scope and camera combination sorry Skywatch here we go let's have a look
there we go 150 pds ah, so again that's absolutely great so that's, that's a good combination is the 294 and the skywatcher 150 pds another popular camera uh, a camera cut scope combination is the ated have a look yeah again so it's in the green so you know any any risk of under sampling is quite is quite low and obviously you do have the reducer on that one and i think from memory it's the 0.85 it's just taking it out of the green but again it's still within that area so it's not too bad so there you go just a few indications there of what scope and, and what you can use with that camera to give you that nice resolution and uh, lower those uh, under sampling issues right let's take a look in stellarium and see what's going on there so let's have a look and see what kind of field of view you're going to get with your um, scope and and camera combination so at the moment i've got it set to my william optics gt81 with the wo reducer and the camera at the moment is my full frame nikon uh, if i was to use my 183c quite a nice close 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 crop on that one and here it is the 294 so it's not too bad at all actually let's just flick back to the 183 obviously the 183 is a, a very small sensor um it's one inch square so yeah it's not too bad at all there's the 294 without the reducer fills the frame quite nicely um, let's have a look with the the red cat nice wide view i know there's a number of little galaxies in this area so you could get a nice wide view with that one that'd be great on marcanian's chain actually and um, that combination that bring out a lot of galaxies in that one um, and then with the newtonian this is 800 millimeter newtonian yeah get a nice tight crop there with that with that camera and scope combination so i'm just going to flick through those different scopes again just to give you so show you what your field of view will look like there's the red cat there's the gt81 without a reducer let's put the reducer on with the reducer so that takes that down from 478 down to 382 millimeter focal length and then with the newtonian so you know this camera gives a great field of view it's worth just mentioning at the moment the um the drivers aren't built for uh, astrophotography at all so if you do want to use this camera you're going to have to use it in nina or in um sharp cap um, I'm, i don't personally get on with sharp cap the only thing i use sharp cap for is a polar alignment and center analysis However, in Nina, yeah, the camera connects great. You use the native driver, not the ASCOM driver. And you can see here, I just wanted to quickly show that um, the actual temperature holds well at um, minus 10. And um, you can see here that the, the power is consistent and that's pretty normal with other, uh, other cameras I've used in Nina. And the temperature holds really, really well there. Look, you can see that over a period of time. And this is while I was shooting my uh, dark frames, so I just thought I'd grab a, a screen grab just to just to show you that one. And talking of dark frames, I'm going to show you what they look like. Next. Those of you who are familiar with the 294 sensor will be aware of the uh, amp glow. Um, it's quite prominent here, a little bit here on the left hand side. Um, this is a two minute exposure. Um, and to be fair, you know, it's, it's common with this camera, with this sensor. I've had a um, the Altair 294 and the Amp Glow was exactly the same and, and it calibrates out no problems whatsoever. So I just thought I'd give you a quick picture there just to show you what the uh, what the Amp Glow does look like. Just so when it does it, if you do buy this camera and you see that, don't be alarmed. It is perfectly normal. So what do I think of the camera um, so far? To be, to be honest, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, it's a well-made camera. Um, it feels really, really sturdy in your hand. Um, it, it's it's not cheap plastic. It has you know metal casing. It does feel like a quality item. Um, I've had no issues with the drivers once they got them sorted for Nina. Um, the, the native driver works flawlessly, and I'm currently shooting my Dart library, um, doing three-minute exposures at the moment. They're rattling through fine and there's no issues with the temperature the temperature's holding steady which is great it's looking clear in a couple of nights time um, so hopefully i'll get to uh, um, do a test on some stars and I'll, I'll share that video afterwards 
But uh, yeah, I think you know if you're looking to make the jump from a DSLR to an, a dedicated astro photog uh, astro camera, um, I think this could be a, a contender because I think it will suit a lot of people's budgets without having to break almost that thousand pound barrier. You know, it's priced. It's price sensible. It, it, when I ordered it, it came within a few days. Um, I think it was like eight days. I did pay the expedited postage, which I think was an extra ten pounds. Um, do have the option of, of more of a slower, slower um, postage, but I just wanted to get my hands on it so I can help help the Astro community uh, see what this camera is all about. So I'll post more videos as I test it. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, Appreciate it if you can uh, leave some comments. If you've got experience with this camera, that'd be great. Um, if not, happy to answer any questions you've got as well. So just post them in the comments below. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, part two of this will come soon. And uh, I wish you all clear skies.